So welcome everyone to our Clearing Offer Holder Day. My name is Natalia and I will be your host for the day. Um, if you are coming back from an original session, then welcome back. And if you're joining us for the first time to the day, then welcome. So I'm just gonna talk you through the program for the day. So here's the program for the day. We've got lots of sessions and we've already had lots of sessions, which will be going up on our website uh, by the end of the day. So we've got some other sessions on preparing for your studies for online learning, exploring our science courses, and also our student life panel. If you're interested in any of our other sessions or you'd like to you know, attend any of those, please do sign up. Um, we'll share the link in the chat or you can register on our website. So in this particular session, we'll hear from Professor Hannah Cook who is um, our course director for medicine and we will, she'll share some highlights of the course before taking questions at the end. So without further ado I'd like to uh, pass you over to Hannah. Hi, so uh, thank you, Natalia. So as Natalia said, I'm Hannah Koch. I'm a, the course director for medicine here. And I'm also a professor of epilepsy and medical education and a consultant neurologist in St. George's Trust next door. So firstly, if you are an offer holder, uh, then congratulations. Uh, you should all have had emails about changes in relation to COVID and the sort of trainings and risk assessments and the processes that have been adopted nationally already. But what I'm going to talk about briefly in this session is really three key reasons why I think St George's University of London, St George's Medicine is the place to study medicine. So I'm going to talk about these three topics, so patient-centred learning, teaching from practising clinicians, and why I believe we really create doctors who thrive in their future careers. So starting with the patient-centred learning, on our course from week one, our teaching is structured around cases and patients from the outset. We have highly rated clinical teachers, strong emphasis on communicating with patients from a range of backgrounds. And as soon as it's safe to do so, we'll be reintroducing early clinical contact. But in the meantime, we've been developing lots of video resources and links with our community and placement leads supported by our already first class team in the Centre for Technology and Education in the e-learning unit. Uh, and many of our team are already very experienced in creating innovative online education even before COVID. So even though there might not be the face-to-face -face patient contact right at the beginning that there used to be, it's still going to be patient-centred, utilising digital technologies, which is actually how a lot of the NHS is starting to evolve as well. So moving on to the second point, uh, which I think is a real strength at George's, we've been doing medicine a very long time, since 1752. And then, as now, our course is designed and led by practising clinicians. So in the leadership team, as well as myself, the neurologist, we've got GPs, we've got acute medical consultants, a surgeon, obstetrician, and we're all represented in the leadership team and, of course, throughout a bigger team beyond that. We share our campus with one of the largest teaching hospitals in the UK and the hospital and, and the medical school is really embedded in the local community with close links to our main partner providers across southwest London and the surrounding counties. We've got really excellent specialist services with a major trauma centre, the helipad you'll have seen on 24 hours in a &E, and many examples which are recognised as best practice in the UK in terms of neonatal care, epilepsy, stroke and so on. And those are the people who are involved in running and teaching on our course. The final point is, I think, the, ultimately, the best measure of a medicine course is do the doctors who come out the other end, do they thrive? Now, our curriculum and our assessment strategy is built around the demands of being a doctor, not just the academic achievement, but we've got a strong emphasis on developing as a lifelong reflective learner on professionalism, on communication skills and support so that you can achieve your best potential. We're a specialist health university. Uh, we care about the health and well-being of our population, and that includes not only patients, but our own staff and students on whom future patients are going to depend. We know that our graduates are amongst the most satisfied postgraduate trainees in the country. The GMC National Training Survey 2019 is the last one that's published. Looking by graduation school, our, our graduates are equipped to thrive. They're the most satisfied trainees 
uh, in their future careers in London, and we're above many other um, highly rated universities. So those are all the reasons why I really feel passionately that we offer a, an excellent course, and we look forward to welcoming some of you to that. So. So thank you, Hannah, for sharing those highlights. Um, before I open up to questions, I'd just like to kind of add that at St George's, we've been working hard to find ways to teach our courses without disruption, whilst also keeping our staff and students safe and ensuring we follow government guidance on COVID-19. So we won't be making any significant changes to the content of our programmes, but there will be some changes to the way that they are delivered. All undergraduate courses will have some essential face-to-face -face teaching throughout the first term, with the majority of teaching taking place online. And you can read more information about those changes to our medicine course um, on the medicine page of our website under the COVID-19 updates. Um, so I'm just going to, to ask some questions to Hannah, but if you do have a, a burning question, please do send it in, because um, we'd really love to hear from you. So. The first question we have is how many students are there within a, a year group or a cohort? Okay, so uh, it varies a little bit year to year, but on our five year program, which is mainly school leavers, there's usually around 800, uh, sorry, 180, 160 to 180 who start each year. Uh, and then we also have a parallel graduate program, which has 70 to 80 students on it. So there's about 250 who start at the same time in two different streams. Uh, those streams come together for the last three years of each programme and they're also joined by another 25 students from uh, clinical transfer who've graduated from our biomedical science degree. So that in the last three years, there's about 280 students in each year group. OK, great. Um, we've also got another question. So what options are there for student selected components? Uh, that's a, a really good question. Uh, it's a really important part of our programme because this is student selected components give students an opportunity to study an area of particular interest in depth and de develop different skills, research, presentation skills, or sometimes test out possible career paths. There are protected opportunities in the first year, in the middle year, the transitional year, year three of the five year course or year two on the graduate scheme, and again in final year. And the sort of opportunities we have include projects in basic sciences, in clinical practice, in service improvement, uh, in medical education, and also quite a, an expanding range of humanities projects. And then, of course, all students also get the opportunity to do an elective after the final exams, depending on the pandemic, anywhere in the world, depending on what the situation is then. Amazing. So we've still got a minute left if anybody wants to send in a question, but I am going to ask Hannah to um, just share her, I guess, her thoughts on the course and any, any last kind of findings that she wants to share with us about the course. So uh, as you've already, as I think I've already said, I think we have um, fantastic relationships with our partners providers and that's for clinical services as well so I think southwest London amongst the London regions is really well networked both for clinical services and then that means that the student experience is also uh, we're much more joined up I think uh, our relationships with our partner partner sites um, we have some good opportunities and links out of London as well and in fact all students the GMC mandate that students have experience in rural and city environments in a range of providers so we provide that through the course and we have a few really uh, unique relationships so with the um, neurodisability hospital in Putney we, we all our students get a bit of experience there um, we're really looking at embedding issues to do with managing long-term conditions which is what BNHS needs um, and managing comorbidities in our curriculum. Great. Um, so we don't have any further questions. So I'm just going to wrap up this session by saying, you know, thank you to Hannah and for coming along and sharing those highlights about the course. Thank you for all, to all of you for joining us uh, for this session. Um, it's been brief, but I hope it's been very informative to you. And you know, by no means are we ending the conversation. So you can contact us. Um, by talking to a current student um, on UniBuddy or a, a member of staff. Um, you can also find out further information on the course about our course pages. Um, you'll be sent kind of emails in the run up to um, your induction with further information and your next steps. 
We will have all the recordings for today's events on our website as well. And you can also join us for one of our later sessions in the, in the day. So as I said, um, you know, we've got a session on online learning next. We've got a session in exploring our science courses. And we've got a session for uh, student, our student life panel with some current students who you can ask questions about the course or student life. Um, so thank you. And we hope to, to see you at a later session today.